Hello Year 4, thank you for joining me here today for your next reading session. Yesterday we had a bit of a dramatic chapter, didn't we? Where Varjak was forced to climb the wall to try and seek help for his family. And we left it just at the point where he was at the top of the wall looking out over the outside world. So let's find out what's going to happen today on the next part of his adventure. Chapter 6 Varjak could see for miles and miles. There were no walls or trees to block his view anymore. Just open space, rippling out ahead of him, beneath him, above him. He was standing in space and it was a long way to fall. He peered down the inside of the wall. He could see nothing through the trees. The gentleman's cats and the elder paw were hidden by the tangled net of branches. There was no way back. He was truly on his own. Had he done the right thing? Shouldn't he have helped his grandfather? He couldn't get that picture out of his mind. The elder paw, limp, like a broken toy. Tremors were coming up from somewhere deep within him, racking him open. Varjak blocked them, stopped them, pushed them back down. The elder poor knew what he was doing. He'd planned it. He was willing to lay down his life so Varjak could have the chance to go outside and find a dog. All he could do now was go on. But where? Ahead of him was the sea of lights, stretching far away into the darkness. Varjak couldn't tell what they were or where they led. He looked up. Another sea of lights. The moon and stars, cold and distant. They made him giddy in the pit of his stomach. So dizzy that he could almost feel the wall slip out from under him. He closed his eyes and counted to ten. It didn't work. The view was too big. And he was too small. A purebred Mesopotamian blue had no place on top of a wall, but then, as his family said, he wasn't much of a blue. So, who was he? Beneath that giant sky, he was no one. He was nothing. Varjak's stomach lurched. He was going to be sick if he stayed on the wall any longer. Down. He had to get down, and quickly. The black cats would be looking for him. But how? He couldn't climb down the wall. It was sheer. He'd overbalance and crash if he tried. There was a tree outside the wall, just one. He could climb down a tree if he could only make it that far. He stretched out a paw. His pad zipped on the wet moss that cloaked the stone. He clung on with his claws and regained his balance. A blast of bitterly cold wind almost pushed him over the edge. Another wave of giddiness washed over him. The wind seemed to taunt him with its song. Too high, it sang. Too high, too soon. Varjak tried to shut it out, but the song was everywhere. You've gone too high, too soon. You'll never make it to that tree. He ignored it, positioned his tail for extra balance and took another step along the mossy stone. It was like walking on ice. Treacherous. Impossible. In his mind, he saw himself slip slide, skid off that wall, smash to pieces on the ground below. He shuddered. Think of something else, he told himself. Think of the way. What was it? Slow time? Moving circles? Shadow walking. Varjak staggered towards the tree. Too high, whistled the wind. Slow time, he yelled back. He wasn't going to let the wind beat him. Moving circles! He wasn't going to let the wall beat him. Shadow walking! Because he was Varjak Poor and he knew the way. Varjak walked the wall like he'd been walking walls all his life. He was light and springy on his paws. It worked! The way actually worked! He wasn't dizzy anymore. He didn't feel sick. I'd like to see Julius do this, he thought. Now he just had to step into the tree and he could climb down easily. He'd done the hard part. Varjak grinned and pounced onto the nearest branch. Crack. Falling. Didn't test it. Stupid. 
The wind whipped into his face as he fell towards the ground. He closed his eyes and everything went black. Chapter 7 Farjack dreamed. He dreamed he was walking by a river in the heat of the night. Zigzag trees swayed in the warm breeze. The air smelled like cinnamon and tasted of ripe dates. He looked up. The stars were different. They sparkled big and bright in a brilliant sky. An old cat with silver blue fur like starlight walked beside him. He looked like a Mesopotamian blue, but he wore no collar and his eyes were amber like the rising sun. Welcome to the land of your ancestors, said the old cat. Welcome to Mesopotamia. Mesopotamia? Where Jalal came from? Jalal the poor, yes indeed, this was his home in the olden days. Barjak's pulse beat a little faster. Did you know Jalal? he said. And if I did? Then I'd ask you questions. Are the tales true? Could he really talk to dogs? And, and what would he think of me? The old cat cackled. What a question! Why should that matter to you? Barjak looked away. My family say I'm a disgrace to the name of Jalal. They say I'm not a proper, purebred Mesopotamian blue. Oh, and what say you? Are you worthy of your ancestors or not? No, said Varjak quietly. He hung his head. I'm not. What if you knew the secret way of Jalal? Would you then be a proper, purebred Mesopotamian blue? Varjak smiled sadly, remembering the elder poor. I already know about the way, and I feel just the same. You know the way? How impressive! Perhaps you will demonstrate. Strike me! The old cat stopped walking. He blocked Varjak's path. He wasn't big, but something about him looked dangerous. Varjak stepped back a pace. Strike me! He commanded again. His amber eyes flashed. Strike me now or die where you stand. Well, if that was what he wanted, why not? Varjak swiped gently at the mad old cat, meaning to tap him on the side, but somehow he didn't connect. His paw sailed through the air and thudded harmlessly on the ground. Varjak frowned. How could he have missed? The old cat combed his whiskers. Am I too quick for you? He challenged. Is this the way of Jalal? I think you know nothing, little kitten. Strike me again. This was becoming annoying. Now Varjak wanted to hit him. Hit him hard. He decided to give it his best shot. There was no way he could miss. He slammed out a silver blue paw. Missed completely and lost his balance. Those alien stars twinkled at him with silent laughter as he rolled onto the riverbank. He sprang up again, furious. Once more, goaded the old cat. Varjak's frustration boiled over. He lashed out, his paws flapped stupidly in space and he toppled to the ground. He kicked, at, kicked with his back legs, but he was fighting himself now and he knew it. He was beaten. His elderly opponent peered down at him. I thought the first attack rather half-hearted, he said, as if they were having a friendly chat about the weather. The third was crude and clumsy, as you know. The second showed potential, yes, but it was slow, terribly slow. Still, you have spirit. If you wish to learn the way, the true way, only ask and I will teach you. Varjak couldn't speak. The words stuck in his throat. He felt ashamed and embarrassed. It was obvious that this old cat knew far more about the way than him, but he couldn't bring himself to admit it. His pride wouldn't allow it. The gold cat shrugged. Farewell, then. He began to walk away. Something shifted inside Varjak, like a locked door opening. Wait, he called. The old cat turned about. His body shimmered in the warm breeze. Don't go, said Varjak. I... I want to learn the way. The old cat smiled. Very well, then I shall teach you. We begin now. He cleared his throat. 
There are seven skills in the way of Jalal. The first of these is open mind. And you have just found its secret. For only when you admit that you know nothing can you truly know anything. Varjak's eyes widened as the word sank in. Who are you? Do you still not know me, my son? Jalal? Jalal the poor, that I am. He winked. Believe none of the tales. Today's activity is to order the events of the story so far. On the screen you will see the grid with uh, six events from the story. Um, you can find the sheet for this attached to the website if you want to print it out or you can write it out neatly in your book. Um, the events are Varjak looks out at the world outside the wall, Varjak falls out of the tree, Varjak warns his family about the cats, Varjak meets his ancestor and learns about the first way, the family does not believe Varjak is telling the truth and the last one, the elder poor battles with the black cats. Have a think carefully about these events and number them one to six to show the order. Number one being the first event, number six being the last. I hope you have fun ordering the events of the story today, year four. Um, good luck with this. I look forward to seeing how you get on with the task later. Um, after I finish speaking here, there will be a slide which will show you the answers so that you can check your work and see if you've got the events in the correct order. So until uh, tomorrow, I will say cheerio and I look forward to seeing you again for the next part of the story. Bye for now.